In today's video we're going to be making uh, whistle mix or whistle rocket fuel. Um, we'll be making a benzoate fuel mix which is to say we'll be using potassium benzoate as the fuel in the mixture. Now you can use sodium benzoate or sodium salicylate but they tend to be a little bit hygroscopic which is uh, they suck a little bit of uh, moisture out of the air and you, you end up with damp fuel if you haven't got it sealed up too well and you know, the items you make with it can also suck a bit of, bit of water in out of the air and, and go damp and not perform as well. I'll, uh, I'll put the formula up uh, on the screen or at the end of the video for this one so I won't go too much into the, the amounts of things we're using. Um, first off we're going to start with the uh, potassium benzoate all of these chemicals have been uh, screened, uh, which is to say I've, I've passed them through a, a, a fairly fine sort of screen that's about 80 or 100 mesh screen that gets um, all the lumps and bits and pieces uh, out of the way and help, helps you get it mixed nice and finely. We're going to mix this wet, it seems to be the, the best and safest way of doing it. Um, it also helps combine the paraffin oil we're going to put in there, which uh, helps bind it into a a bit of a granule at the end, end of it, a very soft granule that's good for, for pressing. The next thing we're going to add is the red iron oxide, roughly about a gram or one percent. I'm making a, a, a hundred gram batch, so one percent of that's one gram. We'll just sort of get that in there, give that a little bit of a, a mix up to get it in there. The next thing we're going to add is going to be the, the paraffin oil and uh, we're going to add also a little bit of uh, acetone in there just to get it um, all soaked in. Just turn the scales on. So the paraffin oil I'm going to use here is going to be just a basic a baby oil. It's fairly fairly pure. It's got no scents or additives in it, this one. So I'll just weigh out three grams of that. A lot of the formulas you see around the place have got a little bit more than three grams or a little bit less than three grams in there sorry uh, I want this to probably hold hold together a little bit well I'll just pour that in there next thing we're going to do is add about 40 to 50 grams of acetone in there this will help dissolve and, and get the um, paraffin oil well into the, the the mix it also keeps the the mixture quite damp uh, which is probably better from a, a safety point of view. It's a fairly sensitive sort of mixture, this stuff, so you don't really want to be mixing it up dry the way we're going to mix it here. And we'll just combine that in together. It starts getting fairly gooey. Still see, when, as you add the iron oxide, you can see how things are com combining. The colour gets pretty consistent once you, you're getting things mixed together pretty well. That's a fairly wet mixture there. Uh, the next thing we're going to add is the perchlorate. I want to keep it pretty damp. So I'll give it a, another little bit of a, a dribble of acetone in there. The damper you get it the better everything's going to going to combine and, and integrate there. We also don't want to be mixing the, the, the oxidizer into this while, it, while it's a dry mix. So once again everything's been pre-screened so I'll I'll put the, uh, the chloride in there. Just kind of gently, if possible, start to combine that. Once again, it, it's still a fairly damp sort of mix. I'm going to make that a little bit damper just to help everything combine together. The acetone will evaporate off pretty quickly, so if you've got too much in there, it's it won't take long to, to evaporate off. As you can see there, as it's, as it's a bit damper, it really, really combines very well, quite smoothly. Just gently giving that a bit of a, a bit of a stir, make sure it's really well combined. You can see that the whole mix is pretty homogeneous, getting to very nice and even colour right across the, the, the whole lot of it there. Now there are a number of different 
catalysts, and by catalysts I mean that's the iron oxide we put in there catalyzes the reaction between the other chemicals and just speeds things up a little bit. Um, you can use copper oxychloride, which uh, tends to be a little bit faster than the red iron oxide, um, but with the tooling and all the bits and pieces I use to make my rockets that I'm going to use uh, with this, I think I'll just stay with the, uh, the red iron oxide. The, um, Copper oxychloride does seem to give you a little bit more, more power and a, a little bit more thrust. But um, I also had a couple of Kato's using that, so I've sort of backed things off and went back to the red iron oxide. I've also up the um, up the amount of paraffin I put in there from two percent to three percent. Might just also help slow it down a bit, but just seem to get a lot less Kato's with my rockets. When I use this one, you can see that's starting to, to dry up a little bit from where it was. That's going to take a, a couple of minutes now to, to dry, so I'll just spread it out in the bowl, keep working it, let that sit for a minute. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. We'll come back in a, a couple of minutes once, that para, uh, once the acetone's had a bit of a chance to evaporate off. Um, then we'll get him out on a, a bit of paper and knead him out and dry him out a bit more, and when he's ready, we'll granulate it. Okay, we've given that about five or six minutes just to sit there and as you can see by that a lot of the acetone has evaporated off so we're going to turn that out onto some, some paper, some baking paper. It's starting to, to dry up nicely and get a, a little bit crumbly, well not so much crumbly but looks crumbly. Just get all of that out of there. dries up fairly quick so you're better off making a, a damper mixture than the drier mixture. Um, the liquid's in there just to make it a little bit safer to, to mix and work with as, as you can see by that. It's uh, starting to dry up into a, a, a bit of a dough. If I pat that out you'll see there's still some acetone will come up to the, the top. So we're going to let that sit there for another three or four minutes and just let it dry out and then we should be just about ready to start granulating it. I've let that sit for another four or five minutes. I've pat it down a couple of times just to bring the acetone out and it, it's starting to, to dry up to about the right sort of consistency. Now you can see that that's starting to get fairly crumbly which is about where we want it. It doesn't really get all that sticky. The acetone and the oil don't really dissolve any of the, the chems we've used. Um, so it, do, it doesn't go really gooey and stick to everything. It does leave a little bit behind, um, but nowhere near as messy as some of the other comps that I play with, the wet comps and star comps that you've got to um, screen out and press and that sort of thing that tend to, to stick to everything and make a, a little bit of a mess. Got a little bit stuck on the board there. Now that's about where we want it for, for granulating. That's a pretty straightforward process. We use a, a usual kitchen sieve that's got a, a mesh in it. It's about the same as what you'd have on a, a screen door or a flywire door. Um, once again, it, it's a pretty easy process. Just grab a, a handful of it. It's still wet enough to be, be clumping together and basically just run, run it around in the, 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 the sieve and it comes through as little, little granules. Um, as it comes out of the sieve, it dries and, and being broken up into smaller bits that's that's going to dry up pretty quick um, you can probably hear the, the rain in the, the background we just had a bit of a rain storm come through that's going to slow up the, the drying process a bit with there being a bit of moisture in the air uh, but this is I dare say this is going to be finished and uh, ready to, to fire off in rockets within 10 or 15 minutes the acetone will evaporate out pretty quick uh, once you've got this granulation part of it done, um, the, the oil doesn't evaporate off, so that will, will pretty much stay in the mix and that will hold it into a nice soft sort of granule that's really easy to press and uh, the upside of that is you, you don't get any dust um, when you're working with the, 
the finished look compressing a rocket like a black powder it's a lot cleaner to, to press and work with um, hence a lot of the, the fuels I'm using in the black powder rockets I'm now granulating because it's a lot less dusty so basically just pour the, the, the rest of what I've got there in, into the sieve granulate that through it's just dried up nicely now that's got all, all that through just give it a, a tap off there get the last few little bits to go through the screen as you can see it hasn't really stuck or gone, gone gunky or anything like that and there we've got a hundred grams of granulated whistle fuel Quite a quick process. At the moment you can smell a fair bit of acetone coming off of that because that, that's going to evaporate. You can see some of the outer, outer bits are flowing around nicely. They're quite dry. I'm going to leave that on the bench. I reckon that's going to be good to go within about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, now you can add a little bit of titanium or something to that as you're mixing it if you wanted a bit of a sparky fuel. I just want the plain fuel at this stage just for the rockets. Um, I reckon they look quite good because our uh, uh, made with potassium perchlorate and potassium benzoate. It does tend to put out a, a bit of a purple glow as they go. It looks kind of special and up uh, fairly high performance so they look pretty good when they go off. Um, I will press up a, a rocket with some of this stuff and uh, add a video of that to the end of this video once I, I get it all done. Um, see how we go for time on that. But that's generally it. That's your, your potassium benzoate whistle rocket fuel. Um, I'll put the formula up at the end. Um, thanks for watching.